Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you, thank you. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute walls fade away, once more it is my pleasure to welcome our many listeners who tune in throughout the world. And also to welcome to the show four exciting and vibrant personalities who have come here to pit their wits and their verbal dexterity against each other as they try and speak on just a minute and in just a minute without hesitation, repetition or deviation. And they are Tony Hawks, Sue Perkins, Tim Rice and Ross Noble. Will you please welcome all four of them? Thank you. Beside me sits Janet Staplehurst, who's going to help me keep the score and blow her policeman's whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the delightful and famous city of varieties in the heart of Leeds in the beautiful county of Yorkshire. And we have before us an exciting, <laughs> throbbing, white rose county audience who are ready to cheer us on our way as we start the show this week with Tony Hawkes. Tony, the subject is... Very apt for the city of varieties, the good old days. Tell us something about the good old days in just a minute, Tony, starting now. Well, how appropriate that I'm given this subject. We are in the City Varieties Theatre, where the magnificent show, The Good Old Days, came in the 70s on BBC One, I think it was, with Leonard Sachs. He was the master of ceremonies, and he would introduce an act using extraordinarily long words, and the audience would get so excited they'd scream and jump about and wet themselves like they were in a crash. Uh, Ross Noble is challenged. Deviate. Isn't it? Weren't it? Wasn't the audience just full of pensioners? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why they were wetting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't exactly. Ross, what is your challenge within the rules? They weren't exactly jumping about. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you a challenge within the rules of just a minute? No, not really. No. <laughs> Give him a bonus point because we enjoy the interruption. But Tony Hawkes gets a point because it's an incorrect challenge and he keeps the subject and there are 36 seconds available. The good old days starting now. A lot of the top variety stars. Uh, Tim Rice. Chan. Repeat of variety. We had variety before. I thought I said um, city varieties. <laughs> You did indeed. A quibble, you, a quibble. And, and, <laughs> yes, but the audience were listening. This is what we were testing. And um, you've obviously brought your friends in with you as well. Um, <laughs> so, Tony, another incorrect challenge. You keep the subject. 34 seconds, the good old days, starting now. Morecambe and Wise probably appeared here. Nicholas Parsons, our esteemed chairman, probably did. That's why the place... Uh, Tim Rice challenge. Two probably. Yes. Probably's, yes. Right. Yes. 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 <laughs> Your esteemed chairman did appear here, but it was yes. not in the good old days. It was doing my own it show. Before but, uh, then, go on. <laughs> 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 the good old prehistoric days. <laughs> good old prehistoric. Tim, you had a correct challenge. You had the good old days. You have 28 seconds starting now. The good old days. Bobby V, Rydell, Johnny Tillotson, several other classic stars of American rock and roll. Yorkshire winning the county cricket championship. <laughs> How long ago that seems. <laughs> Mivy lollipops. Laurel and Hardy down at the flicks. These are just some of the things that come to me when I think of the good old days, and a tear springs to my eye. And also... Uh, Tony, challenge. Deviation, he's not crying. <laughs> He's not crying, but well, I think he was speaking metaphorically, as I understand it. So I don't think it was legitimate challenge within the rules of just a minute. So, Tony, uh, no, Tim, you have a point for an incorrect challenge from Tony. Three seconds to go. The good old days starting now. Leeds United winning the league championship. <laughs> well... There's a player who knows how to ingratiate himself with the audience, right. Um, whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point, and that occasion, of course, was Tim Rice, who has got four points at the end of the round. Tony Hawkes is following in two, Ross Noble with one, Sue Perkins has yet to score, but it is her turn to begin, and Sue, the subject is Peter Pan. Tell us something about Peter Pan in just a minute, starting now. Peter Pan was a boy who didn't want to grow up, a little bit like the modern-day Keith Chegwin, but without the nudity, thankfully. 
born in the very wealthy borough of Kensington, Chelsea, he disappeared one evening and strangely social services were not called. He then went on to prance round with a small girl called Tinkerbell, but not happy with his underground exploits with pirates such as Smee and a man with a strange clawed hand, he used to nip into the chambers of other children and drag them along with him. <laughs> one night, John was enjoying a restful kip when suddenly through his window a small elfin child appeared. Hello, he said. I've come to take you away from the drudgery of school and football and take you into a netherworld of madness. And Ross has challenged. No, I didn't. Well, you'll like him, on. Oh, did it? Oh, yes. I must have my <laughs> challenge. <laughs> and, and the thing was, I was really enjoying I think, actually, there was a repetition of small. Small child and small... Girl. I think there was. Yeah? A small girl. Uh, I think small, it was a fairy. Yeah, yes, and then yeah. take away as well. So. What? <laughs> what are you playing with? I didn't want the challenge, it'd be finger. <laughs> that. I was quite happy listening to the story. Right, but Ross, you did see a small You twice. can take it if you wish. Oh, go on then. Go on then. <laughs> All right. You have a point, you have 19 seconds, you have Peter Pan starting now. Somebody once accused me of having a Peter Pan complex. By this, I thought it meant the boy who couldn't grow up. It did, in fact, mean that I enjoyed wearing tights. Uh, Tim. <laughs> Let him continue with that story. No, I think please. he stopped him just in time. Uh, yeah, pretty much. There Tim were two, Rice, who challenged Two means. Two yes. means. That's right, correct, a challenge. Another point to you, Tim. And 12 seconds, Peter Pan starting now. I prefer Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you challenge. Yes, uh, deviation. He's talking about Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> Who we don't want to hear about. I've been finished. I prefer Peter Pan <laughs> to Peter Pan. Oriental martial artist. Right, yeah. <laughs> Tony, let's hear from you on Peter Pan, or about Peter Pan. Ten seconds, starting now. Peter Pan was keen on green tights and flying. Whenever I do that, I get thrown off the aircraft, which doesn't seem fair in many ways. Tinkerbell had quite a crush. Tony Hawks, then speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point, and others in the round. He's now taken the lead, equal with Tim Rice, followed by Ross Noble and Sue Perkins. And Tim <laughs> Rice, it's your turn to begin. The subject is best sellers. Tell us something about best sellers in just a minute, starting now. The best sellers are to be found way underground, in the best houses, and they contain the best wine red, white, Rosé, champers. This is the quality of a great seller. And I all. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, the challenge. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Peter Ban syndrome. <laughs> right. Uh, we call that hesitation. 43 seconds available. Best sellers with you, Ross, starting now. I think that the best sellers was probably his work in the Pink Panther films. I mean, the way he. <laughs> uh, Tim. Definite hesitation. Well, it was a similar hesitation to yours. Well, yeah, but, uh, yes. I thought it was actually yes, right. worse that, than mine. <laughs> you had to rub it in and say, definite hesitation. I mean, hesitation or not, and leave the, the, the chairman to judge. Um, <laughs> oh, I can get quite pompous if I want to. <laughs> it's the role of a chairman. No, he's, ooh, in the city varieties. Yeah. Just like, ooh. A long word. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> right. 37 seconds, Tim. Best sellers starting now. Best selling books are always controversial. Is it important to unload hundreds of millions of. Uh, Sue Perkins. There was a slight hesitation over hundreds. I was emphasizing no. the word. I think there was a definite hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's running the game, Ross Noble, Sue Perkins, or the audience, but uh, Sue, we will give you the benefit of the doubt. 31 seconds on best sellers starting now. My favourite bestseller writer has to be Jackie Collins, who always sets her work in the heart of Hollywood, where inevitably a man called Lancelot, who happens to be a tennis professional, ends up working his way round the wealthy women of said area. Often his family history is checkered with divorce, possibly incest, depending on whether she's hoping for large sales in her own country. <laughs> his forearm grip is good, we're told that repeatedly, and every page or so we're treated to the word member, which crops up with frightening regularity. <laughs> well, Sue, you may have fewer points than the rest of the team, but you've certainly got bigger applause than this audience. They, <laughs> they're rooting for you. Deal, yes, yes and, and you've got the extra point for speaking as a whistle went, and you have leapt oh. forward. 
But you're still in fourth place. <laughs> yeah. So just a few points behind Ross Noble and Tim Rice, who are equal in second place. Our leader is still Tony Hawkes. And Tony, your turn to begin. The subject is my favourite fairy tale. Tell us something about your favourite... Or, well, you can take the subject any way you like. My favourite fairy tale starting now. I'm not exactly sure what my favourite fairy tale is, although... Uh, Tim Rice... Well, get off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, give Tim a bonus point because they enjoyed the interruption. <laughs> Tony gets a point because he was actually interrupted incorrectly and he continues with my favourite fairy tale, 57 seconds starting now. I'm pretty certain by the end of this 57 second period that I will be sure which fairy tale it is because I'm going to discuss it openly with you in an honest manner, no secrets, you, I'll have your bear. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tim challenged that was complete uh, <laughs> collapse of start party. Uh, it was hesitation. Mm. So, uh, 44 seconds, Tim. My favourite fairy tale starting now. My favourite fairy tale is the very well-known story of Peter Ban, who <laughs> is a disgusting old man who wants to stay in that very venerable state for as long as possible. He has some truly disgusting adventures en route involving strange men with hooks and a lot of dodgy Indians. Red Indians, that is. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Tony, yes. Yes, a repetition of Indians. Right. 21 seconds, Tony. My favourite fairy tale starting now. Most fairy tales are really irritating because they used to end with the words... They lived happily ever after. And this is just the beginning of the story. The castle they've moved in has probably got leaks coming through the ceiling, subsidence underneath, they can't pay their mortgage, they get eating disorders, it's miserable. We want to know the story after. <laughs> Tony Hawks kept going to the whistle, gained an extra point, and with others in the round, he's increased his lead. And, Ross, it's your turn to begin. The subject... The Industrial Revolution. Very apt for a big industrial place like Leeds, but tell us something about it in this game starting now. I really wish that I'd paid more attention in school when we'd been learning about the Industrial Revolution, as I know virtually nothing. The one thing that I am aware of, though, is that looms were very popular back in those days. <laughs> I'd like nothing more than the large device that makes the fabric, and especially the small children that crawled inside to free the jammed workings of that particular machine. The uh, little fingers would go in there and they'd be plucking away and sometimes severed, causing blood to squirt across, changing the colour of the garments that were being... <laughs> Somebody admits he doesn't know anything about it. He did jolly well. He kept going for uh, 32 seconds on the Industrial Revolution. Yes. Yay. And then Sue Perkins challenged. And what was your challenge, Sue? Uh, hesitation. Yes, there was more than one, but it was... <laughs> you've got in there? <laughs> but, but they were all tucked together into one I know. Ball, which is good, isn't it? <laughs> but they loved what you did so much, they kept you, let you go on. 28 seconds now available. The Industrial Revolution, Sue, starting now. My favourite thing about the Industrial Revolution was this spinning jenny, where one poor woman from a local mining village was forced to endlessly rotate time on... <laughs> challenge. Didn't, didn't she say woman before? No, she hasn't spoken before on this one. <laughs> <laughs> 19 seconds, Sue. Another point to you. Industrial Revolution starting now. As I said... Uh, <laughs> Tim Challenge. Hesitation. No. <laughs> <laughs> but in that case, she was about to repeat something. <laughs> because she said, as I said... She was. But, but I wouldn't she... have used the same words. Some <laughs> different words. Let's, let's just see if she can do it, though, Nick. Yeah. Oh, I've got my little She's finger. got another point, and she has 18 and a half seconds on the Industrial Revolution starting now. The best thing about the Industrial Revolution was the invention of buzzers, where people could randomly interject and claim you'd said things that perhaps you might have done three weeks uh, ago. Tony but... Hawk's a challenge. Actually, the way you started the first time, you said the best thing about the Industrial Revolution were those Jenny things. So, repetition of the best thing. Of the best. Well, listen, Tony, mm. yes. Eleven seconds, Tony, on the Industrial Revolution starting now. The Industrial Revolution bears very little resemblance to the Russian Revolution. Hardly any Bolsheviks were involved, <laughs> and Russian speaking was at a minimum. Uh, 
Tony Hawks was speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point and his increase his lead. And Tim Rice, your turn to begin. The subject is the blues. I'm sure something close to your heart, but tell us about it in just a minute, starting now. The thing about the blues is that the second line is always exactly the same as the first. So if your blues singer warbles, Well, I woke up this morning, Lucille was not in town. You know that the subsequent stanza is going to be precisely what you just... Uh, Tony Hawk said challenge. I'm going to be very picky here. Yeah. And? Because it's a stanza would be four lines. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> You are correct. You see, there's a musical man talking as well. I finished. I was going to say, the subsequent stanza, i.e. the next group of four mm. lines, would also have <laughs> the same repetition of two George. lines. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you were, Tim, but uh, I think you didn't establish that in time. 39 seconds for you, Tony, on the blues starting now. Blue is the colour, football is the game, we're all together and winning is our aim. A marvellous stanza sung by the <laughs> Chelsea <laughs> Where's they? I I like that team very much, but most of them don't seem to be from England at all, which seems a shame. I remember the days when you used to turn up to a football match and you could see people playing... Uh, Tim Rice Challenge. Two footballs, there were you two swine. Footballs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tim, you've got a correct challenge. You have the blues again. 20 seconds starting now. The blues is something which can hit all of us at any time, even in a beautiful place like this. In a wonderful city like Leeds, it is still possible to be melancholy, to be glum. But not often. It's only challenge. Why? Uh, repetition of like and also repetition of to be. He sort of... Uh, I don't think you should rub it in, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Correct challenge. Eight seconds. The Blues, Tony, starting now. I woke up this morning and that was the uh, same as the previous... Uh, Tim <laughs> challenged. I mean, that was hesitation. That was hesitation, Tim, yes. yes. <laughs> Four seconds for you on the Blues, starting now. I went to bed this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Ross challenged. I... <laughs> it was repetition of I, but that's just not fair, is it? No, I know it isn't. Oh, and, oh repetition of that tune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross, a very subtle comment and challenge, but remember, this is radio, and we're working in the term of sound. It's what they say, not a repetitious but thought. Da, 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 da. I can't believe I'm, yeah, I'm actually picking up Tim no, Rice on that. That really does. Yeah. That's... <laughs> We, 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 we were giving you... different keys at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in A flat minor for the first I, I woke up this morning and, and then, I went to bed this evening was yeah. in B flat. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I recognise it too. But the point is, uh, Ross, because it was a very clever idea of yours, we give you a bonus point for that. Thank you for that. But as he didn't repeat any words, and therefore we go on language in just a minute, uh, Tim has another point and he has three seconds to continue with the blues starting now. Leeds United Football Club always seems to... <laughs> so, Tim Rice had a number of uh, points with the Blues, including one for speaking as the whistle went, and has moved forward again, and he is now in second place, just behind Tony Hawks, uh, just ahead of Sue Perkins, who's in third place, then Ross Noble, and Tony, your turn to begin. The subject is Sitting Ducks. Tell us something about sitting ducks in just a minute, starting now. If ducks had theatres or went to big outdoor events, somebody would have to be in charge of sitting the ducks, because if a duck was standing, the ones behind wouldn't be able to see the event at all, which would be a travesty of justice, especially if they'd been paying through the nose for their tickets. <laughs> But, in a way, we're all sitting ducks here this evening, seated as we are, beautifully at our chairs, talking for a minute, when anyone can dive in at any given moment, buzz their buzzers. And uh, Sue Perkins' chance. Uh, there were two hours, about um, an hour before I buzzed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, well, listen, uh, Sue, you have 31 seconds. Sitting ducks starting now. If you're standing here as I am, or even sitting, which is what I am <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, my taxi's outside. Well, deviation. <laughs> yes, I, I think we Unless do know, even small, all the listeners around the world... She's sitting. ...know that we are seated here, and in fact I've established it quite at the beginning of the show. So that's a correct challenge, Tim. You have 28 seconds on sitting ducks starting now. Ducks only really sit when they're on water. I can tell you this because I've been studying these feathered creatures. Actually, I don't know why I said that phrase, because I can use the word ducks as often as I jolly well like. Ducks, 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 ducks. <laughs> uh, Tony Challenge. 
This is going to be an extraordinarily clever challenge. Yes. <laughs> and I know exactly what it is. Uh, the word ducks is on the title, yes, so he can say that. Yes, and he said duck, duck, duck. Yes, yeah, so it's repetition of duck, duck. No. <laughs> I can't give you two points for repetition of duck, duck, as opposed to one point for repetition of the word duck. So anyway, Tony, you have 15 seconds. You've got the subject back. Sitting ducks starting now. I've seen ducks sitting not in the water, because when they have their eggs, they like to place themselves over them to keep the duck eggs warm. Now, I'm going too quickly, probably, for some of you, but it's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> You actually had them in awe there. I don't know why they thought it was so incredible information you were imparting there. But, Tony, you've increased your lead at the end of the round. Then Tim Rice and Sue and Ross and Sue Ter Perkins. Your turn to begin. The subject, sleepwalking. Tell us something about sleepwalking in just a minute, starting now. Everyone knows that sleepwalking involves wearing a ridiculous hooded nightgown and cap and walking through to your brother's room where you disturb him. My plan is this. Why not try sleepwalking in the daytime? Visit your local grocer's, pilfer some goods, and as he tries to arrest you, say, I'm sorry, I have just been asleep. It worked for me, certainly, until after six or seven times I was caught red-handed by the peelers and sent down for 12 months. Other uses of sleepwalking, if you've become bored of your partner and wish to assassinate them in the middle of the night, it works as an excellent excuse. I was unconscious, Governor. Once again, I was sent down for another 12 months. And <laughs> <laughs> Tim Rice challenge. Sent down and 12 Sent months. down 12 Pretty months as well. Painful right. Memories. 24 seconds. Tim, you have got the subject of sleepwalking starting now. Some people seem to sleepwalk through life. It seems that... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was falling asleep. No, that's right. Sleepwalking to the subject, and Tony got in first. 20 seconds, sleepwalking Tony starting, for, uh, starting now. Sorry. I'm quite keen on sponsored sleepwalking. I go up to people with a little form, ask them if they're prepared to sponsor me for this event. Uh, Tim Charles. Two sponsors. No, it's sponsored sleepwalking and sponsor me for the event. I'm terribly sorry. I'm that's completely not... wrong. Very well <laughs> shared. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> Tony has a, another uh, incorrect challenge and keeps the subject of sleepwalking 11 seconds starting now. Sleep jogging is another fantastic activity. I do this round the park and people think how impressive it is, especially since I'm dreaming at the time. But I am having... <laughs> Tony Hawks is speaking as a whistle when gains some more points and has increased his lead. And we're moving in to the final round. So, um, Ross, it's your turn to begin. The subject is the pyramids. Tell us something. They're giving you the Industrial Revolution and other pyramids. They're really loading it onto you, aren't they, Ross? 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. I recently visited the pyramids in Giza. The reason they're called this is because they were built by cockneys. A lot of people <laughs> can't understand how they put the stones up there. Well, it was done with transit vans and capris. Telling them all about the place. The thing about the pyramids is that deep beneath the stones, there would be... The bah! <laughs> There'd be the bars. Yeah, that's right. The bars. Have you ever heard of the bars? I thought you said to pow. Deep yeah. beneath the stones, there'd be to pow. Yeah. <laughs> Carol Decker is buried beneath <laughs> the sacred... <laughs> the sacred rock. Hesitation, Sue. 40 seconds for you. The pyramids starting now. I'm obsessed with the riddle of the Sphinx. What would be the question, this strange winged creature? Uh, Tim Challenge. There's a deviation. The Sphinx is down the road from the pyramids. We're talking about the pyramids. Where's well, Egypt in general? I mean, <laughs> I've never not been. not the topic. I'm the, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think... came up here to play a game. Those are the rules. <laughs> <laughs> She hadn't been going for long enough. She could have been going from the Sphinx and the Riddle to the about Pyramids. To say, the Riddle was, how do you get from here down the road to the Pyramids? Yeah. The Doesn't, you don't have to justify it, Sue, because I'm with you on this one. There's a tram I, link, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think if she'd gone a bit longer and hadn't brought in the Pyramids, then she would be deviating. But I don't think you gave her a chance. So, uh, Sue, you have 39 seconds. You have the Pyramids still starting now. Pyramids is one of the wonders of the world, the eighth wonder being Nicholas Parsons in The Nude, which I was privileged to see once, but only fleetingly, alas. <laughs> Attorney challenge. That's about the 500th wonder, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you see the reaction you get, Tony. <laughs> there were a lot of wonders, weren't yes. there? You can go too far on occasion. <laughs> so you've challenged to get a cheap laugh. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and all that happens is Sue, who was interrupted, gets a point. Oh, dear. And she has. I'm true. still speaking about the pyramids. Yes, and you've got 26 seconds. It started, yes. Starting now. <laughs> Based loosely on a design by the Toblerone manufacturers, the early <laughs> Egyptians decided that rather than go for a cubist design, they'd opt for this strange point. Uh, Tim of challenge design. Yes. Twice. There's two designs uh-huh. there. So, Tim, you have got in on the pyramids. Uh-huh. And 19 seconds starting now. The pyramids are absolutely gripping. I warmly recommend a visit. I went there once and hit my head on Tutankhamun's ceiling. Uh, <laughs> Ross's challenge. Um... Uh, Tutankhamun's in the Valley of the Kings and not That's in right. the pyramids. <laughs> That's, um, that was the only day I turned up for school. <laughs> the pyramids. Well, it was worth it, wasn't it? You got a point it's in just was. a minute from that one day at school. Right. <laughs> and you've got another point now, and you have the pyramids 11 seconds starting now. The pyramids are large, impressive buildings which the pharaohs would be buried inside. Only the richest were allowed in. A little bit like Ritzy's nightclub here <laughs> in Leeds. The only difference is... So, Ross Noble, speaking as the whistle when gained that extra point, he has moved forward, but he's still only in fourth place. But his value is incomparable. But it's... Well, I mean, they've all got... They've all got lots of points, actually. Sue's in uh, second place, but only two behind Tim Rice. But justifiably, with all the points he gains, uh, you can understand that Tony Hawk's got the lead. So, our winner is Tony Hawk. Hey. A round of applause. Hey. We do hope you have enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute, and it only means to say thank you to our four vibrant players of the game, Tony Hawk, Sue Perkins, Tim Rice, and Ross Noble. I thank Janet uh, Staplehurst for helping with the score, blowing her whistle, and, of course, our producer, Claire Jones. From our audience here in Leeds, from our panel, from me, Nicholas Parsons, goodbye. Tune in the next time we play Just a Minute. Boom! (laughs) 